Often in classes, a professor will say you need four scholarly sources and four popular sources for your project. But what are these, and how do we tell the difference? Is everything at the library a scholarly source? Is everything in Google a popular source? We will explore popular and then scholarly sources to show examples and to tell you how you can spot the differences. Popular sources are often found by searching Google. The news, social media, and most of the websites you find will fall into the category of popular sources. These sources of information are for a general audience or for the general population, hence the name popular source. They may or may not have an author or authors. Make sure you look this person up to see what sort of expertise they might have on the topic. Popular sources typically are easier to read and understand than scholarly sources using as much commonplace language as they can. If you think about reading levels, a popular source is on the third to eighth grade level. Looking at the example, how easy is it for you to read? Are there a lot of words you need to look up? Is there a lot of technical language or statistics? If the answer is no, you're probably reading a popular source. They sometimes do not tell you where their information is coming from through external links. Here we see there's a hyperlink to the study this popular source is discussing. This is something you want to see, and you may want to use that study in your research. To recap, popular sources may or may not have an author, are typically written so anyone can read them, and are mostly found on Google. That said, you can still find popular sources, especially news, at the libraries. So, if you run into a paywall for a news source, come check the UB libraries. Next up are scholarly sources, or occasionally called peer-reviewed articles. Make sure to select the filters for peer-reviewed journals and also articles on the left-hand side of the library search. All peer-reviewed articles are scholarly, but not all scholarly sources are peer-reviewed. When someone is asking you specifically for a peer-reviewed scholarly source, they mean journal articles. However, some books, book chapters, and other writings can be considered scholarly. For today, though, we will focus on peer-reviewed journal articles, as these are the most common. We can find the majority of these sources using the library website. Why? Because this information costs money to access, and the library pays to gain access to it. Have you ever run into a paywall when searching on Google? The libraries have millions of full-text articles ready to be accessed right from their web page, without the barrier of a paywall. First, let's talk about what peer review means. Peer review is a process much more familiar than it seems. Have you ever let a friend, classmate, teacher, or even a parent take a look at a paper to offer you feedback before you submitted? Then you have done a basic form of peer review. For a large number of journals, but not all, a group of people who are other experts with knowledge of the field review the articles or papers submitted. These peers look to make sure the standards of that specific field are being followed and make suggestions on improvements. This allows scholarly peer-reviewed journal articles to hopefully have high quality information. Please note that this process is not perfect and from time to time articles slip through that are not high quality. The best part is that over time these papers get exposed. You may not know it, but within the world of scholarly papers, researchers, doctors, scientists, and students are all looking at and debating different aspects. We call this the scholarly conversation. So remember that scholarly articles are usually high quality, but the conversation or topics they discuss are not static and continue to evolve. That brings up the next question. How do we know if this thing we are looking at is a peer-reviewed journal article? First, it will definitely have authors. No journal article can be without an author or multiple authors. The reason for this was hinted at earlier. You are held accountable for your work, so your name goes on that work. Just like when you submit a paper in college, you want credit, but also you are held responsible for that paper. It's the same thing here. Second, peer-reviewed journal articles typically have a lot of technical language and potentially statistics because they are written for other researchers in that field. They are not written for a general audience. Technical language, or jargon as it can be called, is usually specific to the larger discipline and that can make it difficult for someone just beginning in that discipline to understand. Think about if the paper has words or phrases that you don't know or had to look up. If that is happening quite often, there's a good chance you're reading a peer-reviewed article. Third. Peer-reviewed articles have special information on the first page that we need to mention. Usually, there is a title followed by an abstract or summary. Remember, all peer-reviewed journal articles should have an abstract. Next, look for the information about the journal. A peer-reviewed article gets published in a journal, just like that news story you were reading gets published on The New York Times, CNN, Fox News, NBC News, etc. 
Usually at the very top or very bottom of a peer reviewed article, you will see a name or abbreviation followed by a date and some numbers. This is your journal information. Finally, all peer reviewed journal articles will have a reference page at the bottom telling you where their information came from. You rarely see this on a popular source. This allows you, the reader, to track that information down and to verify it or use it for your own purposes. These are just a few short tips to understand some of the differences between the sources you encounter. Hopefully this gets you started and helps shed some light on what you're being asked for as you start your research journey. Remember that the libraries can help you the most with finding scholarly sources, but we also have access to tons of popular news sources as well. If you run into trouble, don't hesitate to ask a librarian for help.